Welcome to worship, everyone. Good morning. Happy Palm Sunday. Let's stand up. Yes. Let's sing. Hosanna. Say Hosanna. Hosanna. All right. We praise an everlasting God. Let's worship him. Let's gather. Let's be excited about what God has done for us. Here we go. Strength. Wrong song. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. his friends truly believed. And like the time you entered Jerusalem riding on the back of a colt, they asked, who is this? And they, along with the rest of the world, would soon know. They knew you as the one who healed the sick and fed the poor, the one who turned lives inside out and upside down, the one who had 12 close friends raised a man named Lazarus from the dead and told a cripple to get out of bed soon they would see you are more than anyone who had come before just in time hope had arrived some cheered and cried hosanna save us save us now please save us they waved palm branches and laid them down so you wouldn't have to touch the ground children sat on the shoulders of parents as they pointed to the one they'd been waiting for Echoes of Jesus is Lord filled the city as you moved toward the beginning of the end. And we thought that the king was coming to take his crown. 
but you knew the king was coming to be buried in the ground to bring us from lost to found. Good arrives only to die, only to rise, only for the world to realize you are who you say you are. The king. Is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you, hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away, Hosanna. saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna come have your way among us welcome you here Lord Jesus hear the sound Returning to you, we turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away. saves us worthy of all our praises Hosanna Hosanna come have your way among us welcome you here Lord Jesus we see you we find strength in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna. One, two, three. Hosanna. Do it again. One, two, three. Hosanna. Everybody on this side, look that way. Everybody on this side, look that way. This side goes first over here. You ready? One, two, three. Hosanna. This side over here. One, two, three. Hosanna. Can you imagine as you would go and walk to Jesus enter, and you got this lining the road, and people are shouting it back and forth at each other. Hosanna. Hebrew means save us, save us. Hosiana, Yeshua, Jesus, save us, come, save us. Come, 
save us. Today is an incredible day to celebrate. It is this day where God says, I've picked a day and I'm going for it, man. I'm going for it. And this is the day. He says, okay, here we go. Let's go. Game on. Literally, that's what he's saying as he rides in. Game on. Here we go. And you know why he did it? Because he loves us. That's it. He just did it simply for us. That's the way this is. I want you to hold up your palm front one more time. All right. Because, you know, sometimes when we do this and we clap and stuff like that, we're like, we're kind of Lutheran, you know? And, and so, uh, so I want you to hold that up. I want you to wave it. I want you to just shout Hosanna for 15 seconds. Ready? Go for it. Go for it. That was good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. All right, you may sit down. Let's have the kids come up here, and they're going to come back to your seats in just a second. But while they're coming up, I'm going to do some announcements for the week. Go ahead and have a seat up here, if you would, Ethan. This week, uh, uh, make sure you look at the back of your or in your in your notes because you got the schedule for the week that's there. It's also on the website. Uh, in particular, on Thursday night, there's the Seder dinner. Uh, if you want to be part of that, it's at 6 o'clock. We'll start right on time. You need to register for it so that we can have a dinner for you. But it walks through the Passover meal that Jesus used to give us the Last Supper. So we'll be in the gym at 6 o'clock going through all of that. And at 7.30, we move in here for worship. So if you can't make the dinner, come worship at 7.30. It's a covenant in the blood of Christ. Friday is the Good Friday, and so we have a candlelight and darkness service, 7 o'clock at night. You want to join us for the Children's Chapel at 11 o'clock that morning, Stations of the Cross, please do that. And, of course, next Sunday is the day that makes the difference because it's the resurrection. Hey, you like, like this back up here? Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's good. That's, I like it. I thought as we were putting it up there, I thought to myself, you know, what? have got this big cross there. And it's like, yep, we always remember that Jesus died. But, you know, the thing that makes a difference is that he rose from the dead. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I thought, I thought, you know, we should have just the tomb up front uh, all the time. Just to remind us that that's what makes the difference. Okay. Are you guys ready to celebrate? Yes. Are you? Yes. Okay. I got some things for you. What's the word for the day? And do you remember what it means? Good. Yeah, that's right. Save us. Here you go. Here you go. Okay. And remember, they're waving their branches and they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. There you go, Taylor. Um, and then, here you go, Sophia. And, and then they're taking their coats off, if you can believe this, and they're putting their coat down on the road so it's like paving the road with their coats. Isn't that something? So that they can celebrate that Jesus is coming in and they're like, he is so special, we just don't even want him to walk on the dirt. And so they put their coats down and they get the chance to, to, to pave the road for that. Who needs one of these? Okay, ready? Share those with each other. I'm gonna give you more. And they are shouting this praise of Jesus because they'd seen the great things that he'd done. He'd healed them. He had taught them. He'd go over there, back here. Who needs one? Go ahead. All right. Now, you know what? Who, who else? You need more back over here? Has everybody got one? Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song. It's called Hosanna Rock. You maybe sung this before. Who needs one? You need one? There you go. Who else needs one? All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to, I want you to stand up, stand up right now. Just stand up, and I want you to wave this big time. Okay, you got it? Here you go. Okay, wave it big time. All right, now they're going to wave theirs also. Ready? Your turn. Okay, now they're going to come back to their seats, and they're going to sing it with you. And as they sing Hosanna Rock, you can rock. Is that a deal? Okay, because today's the day we celebrate Jesus coming to Jerusalem to do great things for us. All right? You may head back to your seats with your parents, and you got to make sure that they do this with you. All right? Here we go. Everybody's got to stand up. While we sing this song, ushers, go ahead and gather the offering, and let's have some fun. Hosanna rock. Hosanna means what? Save us. Save us, God. One, two, three, four. <laughs>
This is a bird's eye view of Jerusalem. The blue here is the Temple Mount area. Jesus is coming into Jerusalem between, on the other side of the valley there is the Mount of Olives. And in between is a deep valley called the Kidron Valley, separating the Mount of Olives from the city of Jerusalem. On the back side of the Mount of Olives, there's two cities called Bethany and Bethphage that come into play in what happens during this week. As you approach Jerusalem, if you're a pilgrim coming from Galilee or from the east, you would come up from the eastern side. And so as we look to the east, you would come down the Jordan Valley from Galilee and arrive at a place we call Jericho. And then from Jericho, you would begin to work your way up toward Jerusalem. You would gather with the other pilgrims that are growing and you begin to chant Psalms of Ascent, Psalm 120 through 134. And you'd be excited about going up there because this was going to be the great day and you travel through the Judean wilderness and you would travel up Wadi Kilt. And as you come up closer and closer, the excitement would grow and grow because this is the great holiday, the great feast, the great celebration. You'd come over the Mount of Olives and you'd get your first glimpse of Jerusalem and then you'd find your place to camp for the week. There were so many pilgrims from Galilee that camped on the Mount of Olives that they called it the Little Galilee. Hagalil Hakatsat. They were ready for the week. On the backside of the Sea of Galilee is Bethany, home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, where Jesus raised Lazarus. And between Bethany and Jerusalem is a village called Bethany, or Bethphage. This morning, Jesus said to his disciples, Go get a donkey. And they got a donkey and he rode not straight over the hill into Jerusalem, but where the pilgrim road crosses through Little Galilee. And Jesus orchestrates a parade. And he rides through Little Galilee amongst those whom he'd healed, whom he'd taught, who knew who he was. And they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. As he rode through the crowd, there were religious leaders in Jerusalem who said, Stop them, stop them. And Jesus said, oh no, I won't. I won't at all. As he left Bethany this morning and came to Bethphage, he orchestrated today. He launched this week. He went from Bethany to Bethphage, got the donkey and then joined the pilgrim road because today God was saying, it is game on. I'm coming to my people. I am not backing down. I am not afraid and I will ride into Jerusalem and you are going to have to deal with me and who I am. And so they had to deal with him. Though they didn't like him, the religious leaders, they were going to have to deal with him, the Messiah. Come, let us worship our King.
Mark chapter 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples and said to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it to me. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has a need of it, and will send it back immediately. And when they went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, Why are you doing, doing untying the colt? And when they told him what Jesus had said, they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it and sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is God's word for us today. Amen. Amen. Children may be dismissed. If they'd like to go over to worship and more, they can head out with Stephanie right now in that direction. Everybody else, you may be seated. Open up your Bibles, if you will, to Psalm 118. Can you imagine how many of the little boys used palm fronds as swords on Palm Sunday? We thought we'd make that Stephanie's problem this morning, so uh, they sent it over there. <laughs> Psalm 118 is a great psalm. It's such a great psalm because it, it just fits what God had planned for today. Uh, sometimes I ask people, what's, what's the event that you took the longest to plan? Most everybody, when they answer that, answers their wedding. Right? So if you think, what's, what event did you take the longest to plan in your life? Wedding? Is the wedding? Maybe a move? Something like that, and you're like, okay. <clears throat> God planned this day. And there's not a better word, better passage from Scripture to just to say this than this passage from Psalm 118. This passage is verse 23. Verse 24, excuse me. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day the Lord has made. It marvelously fit, fits for today. So we're going to be looking at, at Psalm 118. What day does he have in mind when he said that? So Grandpa just turned 90. And Grandpa has kind of lived a quiet life. Grandpa drives a 2004 Nissan Sentra. Nothing extravagant. He really rarely eats out. And sometimes you go like, Grandpa, you could use a new shirt. That one's kind of getting a little old. 
His favorite thing to do is just to go over to the park and watch families play. He just loves that so much. Every now and then he'll show up at a soccer game or baseball game with the grandkids, you know, just to watch what's going on. And, and he loves that too. He just watches, sees what's going on. And he's kind of non-unassuming, you know, there's just grandpa. And he'll be there for the holidays and things like that, but he's kind of taking a back seat. So one day you get this phone call. It says, it's your grandpa. And your grandpa says, I've rented a house in the mountains. It's on these days, and I really want you to be there because there's something that I have to tell you. Of course, you hear that, and you begin to panic, like, "Uh uh-oh. And he calls the grandkids, each one of them. One is in Southern California, another was in Louisiana, and and he says, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll help you get there. I'll play for your your plane fight. You you come back, and you do that. And and everybody, the family is, like, texting each other, like, did you get a call from Grandpa? What's going on, you know? And, and like, we have no idea. What's going on with Grandpa here? And, and you do this. And so then you go, you all show up at this place. So you show up, and there you are, and you're kind of waiting. And the first day goes by, and it's just like normal. Nobody does anything special. And you're like, okay, I guess we're just getting together. Second day goes by, it's just kind of like normal. And it's just like, okay, everything's going on. And then you get to the third day, and you have dinner together. And then Grandpa, Grandpa stands up, and he says, I suppose you're wondering why... I did this. I never do this. Suppose you're wondering. And everybody's like, oh no, Grandpa, it didn't cross our mind. We never thought about it. And Grandpa says, well, I want you to know that about 25 years ago, I started buying Google stock. (laughs) And over the course of the years of it dividing and splitting and going on, I have 200,000 shares of Google stock. It's trading at $154 a share. It's about $30 million. What would your reaction be if you were sitting in that room? (laughs) Yay for grandpa. (laughs) You have always been my favorite grandpa. (laughs) And then he says, you know, back in 2007 when the Warriors weren't playing very good, he goes, there was the opportunity to buy into the Warriors and to become a co-owner of that. So I bought into the Warriors back in 2007. And now I understand that my share of the Warriors is about $850 million. Oh, by the way, I also bought into this pharmaceutical company. And I just started duplicating, you know, every, every pay period I just buy into it. And you hear Grandpa go through his whole investment portfolio And when you're all done, you're like, Grandpa, you should just buy a new shirt, you know? (laughs) And you should drive a different car than a 2004 Sentra. I mean, you know, there there it is. And and, and you're just amazed at this. And then he said, I just wanted to call you together because you needed to know this. Jesus enters Jerusalem because we need to know this. He calls us together. And Psalm 118 describes what's going on in God's plan like what happened in Grandpa's plan. In Psalm 118, these words, this is the day, this is the day the Lord has made. He long designed it. It was a good parade song. This is the day the Lord has made. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who goes up to the temple. Bind a festal procession and let's greet him. Hosanna, Hosanna. This is the day the Lord has made. Why does Jesus orchestrate this parade? Is it because he, you know, had an ego thing and he wanted people to, you know, like, okay, praise him, say Hosanna to him? Not at all. Here's what's going on. In the stories of the event leading up to this from the Gospel of John, it's very clear that Jesus is something in mind. Back in October, Jesus had been in the temple grounds for the festival called Tabernacles or Sukkoth, and as a result of that, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am, and they try to arrest him. And then, in December, the Feast of Hanukkah, he's there, and he says, I and the Father are one, and guess what they try to do? They try to arrest him. As this goes by, 
in early January of the year, Lazarus is sick at Bethany, just on the other side of the Mount of Olives, and Jesus goes up and he heals Lazarus right there, and Jesus' reputation in Jerusalem goes like wildfire. In fact, Thomas, walking with Jesus up to heal Lazarus, says to the rest of the disciples, let's go with him so we die with him. And then, in John, it says this, the chief priests and the Pharisees had given orders that if anyone found out where Jesus was, he should report it so that they might arrest him. That's what Jesus is facing. And so the verse right before that one, John eleven fifty six, it says this, the people are going, will he even come to the feast? It's so risky. It's so dangerous. Will he even come? I doubt he'll come. He probably is not going to be at this feast. And you know what Jesus' answer is? Oh, I'll be there. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the one on a donkey. I'm going to be the one that people are praising as I ride into Jerusalem on this parade. I'm going to be there. It's game on. And so he heads into Jerusalem with all of that behind him as he goes in. It is a huge confrontation. Jesus is confronting the religious leaders of Jerusalem. And he's saying, are you going to believe in me or not? Are you going to listen to what I've taught? Are you going to see the miracles that I've done? Are you going to embrace me or are you not going to embrace me? And they, and they say to him, tell the people to stop praising you. And Jesus is like, no, no, they should, they should keep praising me. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Now, please, tell them to stop. No, 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 that's right. They should keep praising me. In fact, if they stop, then the rocks are going to start shouting. Because this is the day the Lord has made. God comes to confront them. He rode into this room this morning to confront us. He rode into this morning to ask the same question of us. Will we, will we listen to, to what he taught? Will we listen to who he is? We will, tr will we trust the incredible miracles that he has done? Will we say, you are my God? Will we say, you are my savior? There is salvation in no one else. You are the one. Will we lay aside all the other preconceived ideas? Will we set aside all of those things and say, no, Jesus, you're the one. It asks for the religious leaders to change their beliefs. It really does. That would have been a very hard thing for them. And Jesus rides in and, and they're saying, we know we got to get rid of him. And so the question is, in this confrontation, do we hear him saying the same thing to us? Will we change all that we believe to embrace who Jesus is and to recognize the promises that he gives us. Jesus is pushing the point. This morning, <laughs> I said to somebody, happy Palm Sunday. He says, everybody's happy it's Palm Sunday. Then their son says, well, not everybody. Because the stone, the builders rejected. Now, here's the image. Imagine you walk outside and you look at the foundation of your house and that's what you see. What's your reaction? <laughs> I, I, anybody here go like, oh, great, this is a problem God just wants me to deal with. Is that your reaction? No, no, no. Your, your reaction is, oh, no, man, i got to get somebody out here to deal with this because this foundation is, is no good. And so when they say the stone the builders rejected, it's because the stone is no good. It's like having a foundation like that. Here's what it looks like. If, you, if you're going to be uh, quarrying stones, you cut a groove this way and that way and then like this, and then you stick wedges in there and pound them down in there, and then you, after you get the wedges in, then you soak them so that as they enlarge with the water, it just cracks the, the stone off just a little bit, breaks it off a little bit. Can you imagine working on this? And then all of a sudden realizing, oh, man, this thing is cracked. It's no good. It's no good for a foundation. It's no good at all, and you just leave it alone. That's the stone the builders rejected. So what they're saying about Jesus is, Jesus, you're not the one. Jesus, we don't want to trust in you. Jesus, we're pushing you aside. Even worse, we're executing you. And that's this week. And so when he rides into Jerusalem, and he, he's riding in, and he's saying, here I am, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with me? 
And he wants that to happen in every single one of our lives. Do we say, Jesus, you are the one, or do we say, you're the stone that I'd like to reject, that I'd like to push away? God will use exactly what happens here, the stone that the builders rejected, but chosen by God. So this week, he's going to be executed, but on the end of the week, he's going to rise from the dead. You go, the people pushed him away, but what did God do? God said, you're the one. I vindicate you, and in his resurrection, we know that he's the one. As we, as we go through this week, we realize that, that Jesus knew that they were going to reject him. He had said it in advance. In fact, Jesus quotes this psalm to the spiritual leaders of Jerusalem. He says this in Matthew chapter 21. He looks at them and he says, have you never read the scripture? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. <laughs> He's looking straight at him when he says that. You're going to reject me, but it's going to become the cornerstone. About two months after Jesus' resurrection from the dead, Peter was talking to a group of people in Jerusalem and saying, you know, this Jesus whom you crucified, God raised him from the dead. That's exactly what Psalm 118 talked about. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. It's the most important piece. To which he adds these words. There is salvation in no one else. Jesus is the one. So why did he make this day? Why did he say, okay, this is the day? A long plan, ever since before creation, I planned this day. He did it for a number of reasons. One is that this week was going to launch some things. So the Temple Mount is 300, uh, it's 27 football fields. It's 330 yards wide, 580 yards across. He rode around through the Kidron Valley and he came up on the south side of the Temple Mount and he walked up the steps, these very steps, by the way. He walked up these steps. And then it says that he went into the temple grounds. Now, what he saw when he was in there was that that large open area, the court of the Gentiles, had become a marketplace. And Jesus says, wait, this is supposed to be a place of prayer for all nations. And having looked around, then he walked back out out, walked back down these same steps, and I'm sure he thought to himself, I got some work to do. And he went back to Bethany. On Monday, he comes in, and he cleanses the temple, if you will. He, he gets rid of some of the merchants. On Tuesday, he sits in the courtyards of the temple and teaches. On Wednesday, he plans the meal, and on Thursday, he gives us the meal of this new covenant. He's betrayed, crucified, on Friday to pay for our guilt and raised up gloriously on Sunday. This is the day that God has made because God wants to do this. You see, beyond just what he's going to do in Jerusalem, he wants us to know this. He's richer than Grandpa. He has the entire of creation that he wants to gift us with. He has his friendship and he has his forgiveness. He has resurrection. He has all those gifts to give us which he had planned to give us before he began to create. As it says, he made known the secret of his will according to his good pleasure which he set out in Christ. And he did it today. This is the day to make it known to us. And he does it this week. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you rode into Jerusalem to give, to make known to us the things that were obvious from before the foundation of the world, that you, and you wanted to make known to us the incredible love of God for us, to make us children of God and to redeem us, to give us a hope. We thank you that just as you came to serve. Today, you've invited us here to receive. That today, as we share in the bread and wine, your body and blood, you give to us why you went to Jerusalem, the forgiveness of our sins, the gift of eternal life and hope. Thank you. Thank you for 
for coming face to face with us and, and to impress on us the importance that you are our redeemer. You've done great things for us. And now we ask that you would bless us, Father, as we share together in the meal of your sacrifice for us. Father, we ask us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together. If you desire someone to pray with you during the Lord's Supper, Andy will be over just to the side here of the lectern. Feel free to go up there any time during the Lord's Supper, and he will pray with you about anything you want to pray about. It's also a special day, not just because it's Palm Sunday, but we get, we get to celebrate uh, some First Communions. Uh, and so Ellie and Angie and Bianca Valle are receiving the First Communion today. And so the way that will work is after the, the table is ready, the service workers will receive communion first. They can get singing again for us, and then we'll invite the valets to come up to be the first table from the congregation. And then the rest of the congregation will come up as well after that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you have in store for us and making it known to us and announcing it to us through your son Jesus. Announcing to us that we have forgiveness. We have grace and mercy through his sacrifice of his life for us. We ask, Lord, that as we receive this meal that connects us to all of that, that we would do it in good and worthy ways. That it might strengthen us in our faith in you and together. We pray this in your son Jesus' name, who also taught us to pray. Our Our Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom kingdom come, come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. In the same way, also after the supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This is my blood, which is shed for you, a new covenant for your sins. Do this as often you drink in remembrance of me. The Lord's table is ready. As long as we eat this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim his death until he returns. Amen. You may be seated.
Please stand and pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this meal and, and the strength and the faith that it gives us and the connection it gives us to your Son, his death and his resurrection, but also to each other. We thank you for your Holy Spirit giving us faith, showing us everything you have in store for us and everything you have prepared through him. We ask, Lord, that you be with all those that we know who are dealing with really serious health concerns. We pray that you'd bring them healing, a respite from the pain, Give the doctors and nurses who are working with them answers to help them work through these things. And if it's not your will to do so yet, Lord, we ask that you give them a peace that surpasses understanding during these times. We pray for continued recovery for all those folks that we know who are getting over illness and disease and surgery. We pray you knit their bones and bodies back together and give them strength. We ask, Lord, to be with all those we know who are <clears throat> dealing with job transitions, whether they're looking for new jobs, leaving jobs, moving for new jobs. We pray that you give them peace during these stressful times uh, and that they would find new adventures or stay where they are and be happy and serve you and be, provi be provided for what they need and for their families. We thank you so much for the opportunity to do things like Joyful Bounty yesterday. And we ask you bless the families uh, that received those grocery bags and those gift cards, that they'd have a wonderful time celebrating your good creation and come to know you even better through that. We pray, Lord, that you would bless our celebrations of your goodness throughout this next week, which we call Holy Week. We set it apart, special throughout the year, thinking about everything you've done for us through your son, Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing from Numbers chapter 6. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his favor upon you and give you his peace. God's people say? Amen. Join with me in response from Psalm 118. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hosanna, save us, we pray, O Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Okay, brothers and sisters, even the rocks cried out, right? So if we don't sing, the pews are going to cry out. So let's give it up to Jesus. He's here. He's listening. Remember those walls that we called sin and shame They were like prisons that we couldn't escape
our sins, nobody but Jesus, who brought me out of that pit, he did, he did, who paid for all of our sin, nobody but Jesus, who rescued me from that grave, Yahweh, Yahweh, who gets the glory and praise, nobody but Jesus. Have a great week in celebrating the goodness of God this week. Amen? Amen. Amen. Have a good day. Have a great day.